Well, greetings once again from Brisbane, Australia. What a joy and privilege it is to be with you again. We're looking at the names of God and we're into our third part on Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the A or the Z and everything in between. We have uh, mentioned many times and I continue to mention it that our very foundation must be based upon God. So our belief in God will tell us to the depth that we have a relationship with God. I have mentioned on this um, uh, devotions that the amount of names of God that God reveals to us shows us the depth that we go into God, how deep we go in or how shallow we remain out. And so if there is a sickness that, uh, for example, was to hit you, uh, your reaction to that sickness will tell you the depth that you have a relationship with God. I think a great example of this is seen in the life of Jacob. We know that his name means deceiver. And we read in Genesis that uh, because he uh, deceptively uh, took the birthright and the blessing from Esau, that Esau was going to kill him. And so he flees from his family, he flees from his home. And on the first night that he flees, he comes to a, a spot and he grabs a rock and lays the rock on the ground. And there he slept that night. But through the night, God comes to him and gives him a vision. And that vision he sees is angels going up and down, up and down from heaven. Now, let me sidetrack here a little bit and, and ask the question, do you believe that the vision that uh, Jacob had here was a vision from God? And secondly, have you had visions from God and not necessarily known it? I believe you have. And so it shows the depth. And we're going to look just briefly at, at Jacob here to see the depth of his relationship. As we said, Jacob means supplanter. He was fleeing because he had deceived people to gain things. Uh, and uh, so now he's, he's running and he has this vision. And at the end of the vision, he says these words, words, truly God was in this place and I did not know it. You see, that's the level of his relationship with God at that time. But God gives him a promise and, and he throws even through that vision. Uh, afterwards, he, he, he says to God, he says, God, if that was really you, be with me in my journey and bless me. And God later comes and says, I will bless you. Go uh, under my covering and my protection. And we know that he goes down to Laban's house and, uh, and there he remains for 20 years. First of all, working for a wife, uh, and again, he was deceived because in this time, God is beginning to develop Jacob and to make him into the man that God wanted him to be. But if you don't have a revelation of God, then you can't develop and God can't work within your life. And so 20 years later, they're now going back. God told him to go back to his homeland. And so now, and the wealth that he has, is travel, traveling back, and this time he has another vision at night. And this vision, he wrestles with God. He has an encounter with God, and he wrestles with God. And he's come to the revelation of the importance of the foundation, of the stability, of the protection, of the power of Almighty God. And he says, I will not let go of you, God, until you bless me. And we know the story well. And so God turned around and said, what is your name? And he said, Jacob, supplanter, deceiver. And God said, no longer will you be called Jacob, but you will be called Israel, Prince of God. He changed him because he gets a fresh revelation of God. In this 20 years, God has come to him and God's been able to develop him and build a foundation. And so as we go through these names, the challenge before you and I 
is how strong is our foundation? Does it crack at the first bad news that comes along? Are we bound by fear? Are we bound by anxiety? Are we bound by hurts and rejections of our past? Uh, how strong is the foundation that we are built upon? You know, we looked at last week that uh, Jesus said to the disciples, who do people say that I am? And uh, then he turned it around. He says, but who do you say that I am? And quickly Peter comes and said, you are the son of of the living God. And through that revelation, God was able to say to Peter, and upon you, Peter, my rock, I will build my church. And so the challenge, we're not just looking at names, but we want our life transformed. We want to be changed. And so we're looking at this name over these last couple of weeks, uh, the Alpha and the Omega the Alpha and the Omega. He is. And it says here in, uh, in Malachi and, and chapter, uh, chapter 3, Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, it says these words. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O son of Jacob. And see, the, what God is establishing here, God is establishing his character. We must understand the character of God. To know God, we must understand his character. And we looked at the character last week. We looked that he was infinite. He was self-existence. If we don't believe that God always was, that God always will be, then we have no foundation to stand upon. We may as well give up church and we may as well give up praying and we may as well give up our Bible reading because without a foundation, it crumbles with the first storm that comes along. And sadly, 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 I've seen many Christians uh, who when they encounter the storms of life, crumble and fall to pieces. Uh, but we must come to the revelation of the character and the nature and uh, and the purpose and the love of Almighty God. And so tonight, in the few minutes uh, that we have, we're going to look a little at the nature of God. And we just read it in Malachi in chapter 3 and verse 6. Let it be read it again. For I am the Lord. I do not change. Hebrews tells us, Hebrews 13 and verse 5 tells us that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's look for a moment at yesterday. You know, we see that everywhere he went, multitudes gathered around him. He healed the sick. He cast out demons. Uh, he, you know, he had compassion on people. Uh, he spoke the word with authority. Uh, and multitudes came out. He fed. He had power over nature. He walked on water. He did unbelievable miracles. And yet in all of that, he says, that you, you and I, that's me and you, that we will do greater things than he does. And yet we don't see this today, at least in the Western world. We don't see these things today. And the reason we don't see these things, the reason we are doing greater miracles than what Christ did is because we don't have a trust and a reliance in the foundation of God. When things are going good and we're in church on Sunday and we're worshiping and we listen to the preaching of the word and, and we have fellowship with our friends, then we're solidly built and we're, we're, we're praising God. But the moment a storm comes in our life, we begin to crumble and the worse that storm becomes, then the, 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 the greater we fall apart. And that's because we don't have that foundation in God. And so we need to understand that the God that we serve, that the God that we are the son of, that the God that, you know, I did a study on the names of God uh, and the name that I looked at today was that he is a father to the fatherless. God is a father to us, uh, the fatherless. He's making us our sons. He's taking us out of the miry clay. You know, um, Luke chapter 4 and verse 18 to 19 talks about our scars and our storms and our issues. Uh, but Christ came forth as our father 
to, to heal us of those storms and to replace the chains and break the chains that have held us back because God is the father of the fatherless. And so here in our study, we're looking at the nature, the nature of God. And in this, we see that he is the same yesterday. And, and so the miracles that he did yesterday, he said he'll do today. You know, I remember years ago, it was such an impact, probably one of the first great miracles that I saw under my ministry. I was ministering in Zambia and we stopped at this little town just for a one night meeting. It was an open air meeting. They didn't even have a building and about 50 people came out to this meeting. And in the meeting was a 14 year old girl totally blind. She had been born blind. This is on my YouTube channel. You can actually go to my YouTube channel and look this up and you will see this blind girl that was totally blind in instance, in the matter of minutes, uh, having her eyes open to where she could see my fingers and so forth. I was there last year again. And that girl is still uh, alive and uh, is, is still can see as good as I can or you can. God came that night uh, and totally healed her. God is the same yesterday, today. You know, I was ministering two years ago in, uh, in, in, uh, in Kenya in Bengoma. And uh, we had a number of people come forward with cancer. And one lady on the Friday, I'll never forget this. Again, this is on my YouTube channel. We recorded it. Uh, and uh, this lady came forth. She had booked herself out of hospital. Uh, she had stage four cancer. She bought her x-rays with her. And uh, she came to that meeting in a taxi and came down, walked down the hall, struggled to walk down the hall of the church, uh, sat in the second row, and at the end of the meeting came forth for pregnant, show, uh, came forth for prayer, showing her x-rays and saying she has four, stage four cancer. We prayed and she yelled out, all pain is gone. All pain is gone. Then I had the pastor's wife walk her around. She came back and totally, totally healed totally set free of cancer, didn't have to go back to hospital. You know, this doesn't just happen in meetings. I was speaking uh, last year via Skype into uh, India, and I was speaking on a Sunday in the church there. The pastor knew, uh, set it up that I would speak. He invited Muslims to come. He invited the unsaved to come. He invited others to come. And there was a lady that had leprosy. She came forth. Uh, and I put, my, I put my hand on the screen just like this, uh, as though I'm putting it on her head. And I began to pray. And, and just as Christ did, I reached out to that woman with leprosy. And I bound the leprosy and set her free. Uh, and she cried out, all pain is gone. All pain is gone. Uh, and then straight after her, a man comes forth uh, and he had cancer in his mouth, uh, in his tongue. He couldn't speak. Uh, and so he said he wanted prayer in the best way that he could speak. And we prayed. He was in much pain. Uh, and he cried out as we pray, all pain is gone. All pain is gone. And I rang the pastor back via Skype a few days later and I just to check how especially the lady with the leprosy was going and and he said to me he said prophet Tom he said I've just come from that village and I'm pleased to tell you that all leprosy is gone all the scars have come off her body she has pure skin perfectly healed all leprosy gone and then he said you know the man you prayed for that had cancer in his mouth well after the meeting he spoke to me for two hours he wasn't able to speak before that but God had loosened him and God had totally set him free of the cancer in his mouth. All the pain was gone. The tongue was restored and he spoke for two hours after. God said, I'm the same yesterday, today and forever. God does not change. He's going to be the same tomorrow. If you face a storm tomorrow, if you face a storm next week, if you face challenges in the future, he's the same then. If it's cancer that is your storm, if it's heart condition that is your storm, if it's diabetes that is your storm, if it's liver disease that is your storm, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. When he walked this earth, he healed the sick, he walked on water, he multiplied 
multiplied food. Uh, he provided the money for taxes uh, from a mouth of a fish. Uh, he's the same today uh, and he'll be the same in the future. If you need money, he will provide it. Uh, if you need healing, he will provide it. Uh, if you need food, he will provide it. Uh, if you need a supernatural intervention, he will provide it. Uh, hallelujah. 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 But something special about the nature of God. You see, the nature of God is holy. Let's go to Revelation. And in Revelations chapter 15 and verse 4, we read these words. I'm reading my Bible's too little with this light. Let me go here. Here we go. They each held the heart of God and they were singing the songs of Moses, God's servant, uh, and the song of the Lamb. Mighty and marvelous are your miracles, Lord Yahweh, God Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, O sovereign King of the ages. Uh, who will not reverence you with all, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? Now listen, for you alone are holy. And all nations will come and bow in worship before you uh, as your blessings have revealed. God is holy. You know, we need to understand, uh, you know, in, in, in 1 Corinthians and chapter 6 uh, and verse 19, it says, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and we need to understand the word holy here. For, for God cannot have corruption in a holy vessel they do not mix and you know in verse 18 of the first corinthians chapter 6 uh, god uh, paul is talking about you know the sinful nature of man uh, where he's having adulterous relationship uh, and then he says i'm the temple of the holy ghost the two do not mix it's like taking mud and a fresh glass of water and pouring the mud into the fresh glass of water that fresh glass of water is no longer pure and so if you're not having the, the revelations of god and and if god is not moving through you with healing power or if god is not moving through you in the supernatural realm you need to look at your life you need to see what from from galatians chapter 5 what areas there verse 16 and on that are corrupted in your life that you need the holy ghost to remove and cleanse it tells us in revelations chapter 4 and this is this is the oldest uh, worshiping god and it says in chapter 4 and verse 8 uh, these words it says they worship without ceasing day and night singing holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was who is and who is to come you see every moment of the day we should be getting revelation of god proverbs 29 and verse 18 says without a vision the people perish the literal meaning of that word is without a progressive revelation of god the people perish you may have had a revelation of god of salvation you may have had a revelation of god as the baptizer in the holy ghost you may have had a revelation of god as your righteousness but if you haven't had a fresh revelation then you're dying and you need to get a fresh revelation of God you need to have a progressive revelation of God and this is what the elders are doing here and this is what we need to be doing we need to be crying out day and night holy 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 because God is revealing himself to us well our time has gone now 15 minutes goes so fast uh, but it's a joy and we've got all year to go through the names of god i'm um, just finished my 130th name of god and uh so the book is coming along nicely but uh you know continue to tune in on tuesdays as we cover the names of god we're looking at he is alpha and the omega if you're free on thursdays same time, uh, tune in where we're looking at spirit beings or human beings. Which one are we? Father, what a joy it is to share again this day. Thank you, Lord, for these people that have tuned in. Speak to their hearts as I've shared the word of God this day. 
open up revelation of you. Let their foundation be built upon the rock, Christ Jesus, uh, so that in the storms it will not move, uh, in the storms it will not crack, uh, in the storms it will stay strong and firm, uh, and they will grow in you like Jacob grew uh, to the point that you changed his name uh, and you called him Israel. Father, change our names and call us the sons of the living God. Amen and amen. Bless you all. This is Prophet Tom. What a joy it has been to be with you today. Amen.